Okay. Uh, I think we'll just get started now. I'm sure we'll have a couple people hopping in after the fact and we'll catch them up uh, afterwards. So uh, thanks to all who are attending. Um, I'm Brent Rogers. I'll uh, further introduce myself right now, but I'll be taking us through this digital trends webinar uh, here at Greenland. I'd like to do these webinars at least once a quarter, just, you know, what's the latest going on digitally? Uh, what are the latest trends? And that's kind of what we're going to go through today. So we'll just kick it off right, right into it and get started. Um, if you do have questions on the way, uh, Nicole from our team is here in the background and she can answer some questions or she will also alert me to uh, answer any questions you have uh, again on the way. So, um, you know, agenda for today, uh, I'll introduce Greenline a little bit more for those of you who are unaware of who we are. Um, we'll talk about Google Analytics 4, uh, digital trends. There's a lot of information going on about Google Analytics 4 right now versus Universal Analytics, Google Performance Max, and the uh, beta testing of that new platform, uh, data integrations in the cookie world. And then we'll talk about Google and, and Bing vehicle ads, and then finish up with some Q&A. Uh, Q So uh, Greenline Automotive, who are we? Uh, digital agency, uh, specifically, uh, you know, targeting uh, automotive. So we have two divisions. Uh, we have a non-automotive division and a automotive division uh, of, of basically equal size. Where did we come from? Uh, my background is heavy automotive. I was working at a uh, large car dealership group for, uh, I want to say, about 10 years in Chicago, running everything from operations to marketing. Uh, ultimately, grew, grew frustrated with what we are sold in the automotive space, and that's kind of where Greenline Automotive came from. So we're uh, you know, a tech-enabled digital agency. What we try to deliver is tier one experience down to tier three dealers, uh, very heavy in automotive. So what you see for uh, you know, some of our dealer groups there, we have some OEM relationships where we actually manage the tier tier one spend. So the expertise and, and um, account management uh, discussions that you get with us are very different than you get with some of the template providers that are out there in the world. So that's really what we try to solve for uh, in a nutshell. Um, you know, what's the big green line difference? Transparent flat fee, very low account to staff ratio for focused attention, completely custom account setup. So we set everything up to your market, to your to your brand, whether you're an independent or a standard uh, franchise dealership, everything's set up for you. Um, latest in automation and tech integrations, very robust experience across the team. Everybody is very heavy automotive background. Um, and then we focus on long-term relationships. So we do not try to sign up every single dealership in town. We try to have key partners and then we do not take on your competition. So all of those things are kind of what makes Greenline different uh, as an agency. And then very last, uh, you know, just all of our services are the ones you would expect, uh, you know, with digital agencies that you see from, you know, a lot of our competition. So anything from paid search, conversion rate optimization, e-commerce, uh, accessory sites for selling, you know, uh, niche automotive accessories uh we handle you know radar detector companies we handle uh you know the oem so pretty much anything you can think auto we touch in in any single channel ott analytics everything and so um our experience touches basically any channel so if i don't touch on anything and you have some questions about it um we're going to send this deck over at the end and you can contact us and we're happy to talk, talk to you through any questions you might have that i don't uh, touch on today with Max, uh, last section that we have here is vehicle ads, which are formerly called vehicle listing ads, but it's the latest of what's going on in automotive shopping, uh, you know, Google shopping ads and, and that kind of thing. So again, formally as VLA ads, um, the, you know, beta testing uh, uh, was just released, excuse me, it was just released a beta really at NADA, so March, and it should be released out of beta anytime now. And there's a couple of good things that come with that. Um, but really what there's also some bad things that come with that. So the good thing is that new inventory is now there. Um, the ads are serving a little bit more often, but now that it moved into beta and it's gonna be moving out of beta, it was a very limited set of agencies. We were part of the alpha program. So uh, at the time we were one of the only agencies that could do it um, as part of Google's alpha testing. There was only like three or four agencies. Well, now it's, it's a lot of agencies well, now that it's in beta. And then as you get into full release, almost every agency is gonna have the ability to do that on your behalf which means a negative thing for you. So it's good that everybody's gonna have access if you're a dealer who didn't have access, but now that everyone's gonna do it, the costs to do this are gonna go up. So to my point earlier about Performance Max and being a first adopter gives you the highest efficiencies is that some of these lower costs per clicks you can expect to rise. And so um, as we were running these campaigns, we're seeing a dollar, you know, in, in the range of a dollar cost per click, depending on the market they're starting to go up a little bit. So if you get into $1.20, $1.30 a click, still very efficient for what, other than what we've seen, but these ads are, um, 
they're going to get slightly more expensive because everybody is going to be there. And so that's a call out to be ready for if you've been look, running these campaigns already, if you, um, that your costs may go up. And if you haven't been running these campaigns, I definitely would make sure that they're part of your, um, I would make sure they're part of your ad spend. You know, it, it really levels the playing field, you know, and who does it level the playing field with? Carvana, Auto Trader, Car Gurus. They're starting to use these vehicle ad listing ads or vehicle ads again. Excuse me, I, I need to correct my language on that. They just changed it. Um, but CarMax, these national brands are spending a ton of money and they've been doing it for well over a year. They were all part of the alpha program. So they were getting clicks in the 30, 40 cent range while all of us tier three dealers didn't have access to it. So again, they, they feature new and used inventory. Um, it does update automatically based on your inventory feed. So there's no keywords that need to be built. You don't have to rely on managing your agency accordingly. Like, are, are we doing this on your behalf? It just runs based off your feed. So if the feed's right, then your ads will run accordingly. So you can really let the inventory do the work for you. Um, so uh, the one call out I will say is unlike Performance Max, which is very bottom funnel and driving the store visit, a phone call and um, all of those types of things, those vehicle ads are, are more of a mid funnel tactic. It's a VDP view. It's catching somebody when they just start shopping. So I might type in Nissan Rogue for sale and see what the pricing is, as you see in the screenshot, but I might be debating between a Rogue and a CRV or something like that. And so the user might come to the site, check it out. And yes, we do get some conversions, but they're kind of in that mid funnel level where they haven't quite, they're not quite ready to call you yet. So we do see store visits, we do see these things, but look at it as a, as, a, as a mid to lower mid tactic to drive activity. And so the performance that you see on your site from vehicle ads is pretty similar to AIA ads on Meta or Facebook. And so a lot of VDP activity, you do get the calls and forms, but it keeps you in front and it also keeps you from having to spend so much money on third parties. And so if the third parties are trying to buy these ads to drive traffic back to their site to sell them back to you, as a dealer, I would make sure that I am driving the traffic to myself instead of paying auto trader or cars, car gurus or any of those providers. I don't want to pick on anyone specifically to then just resell it back to me. So control your own inventory. It's it's one of the inexpensive ways you can really you know level that playing field. So um, that's that's really the main call out here for uh, you know vehicle ads on Google. And so uh, with anything Google does, uh, Microsoft follows. And so MSN Autos and Bing Vehicle Ads, those are the next thing. They really do the same thing in a slightly different way. I didn't pull a screenshot for you, which I should have. Um, but the key call out here is that, you know, th although it's not the scale that you get on Google, 10% of, you know, nearly 10% of consumers use Bing. And so uh, MSN Autos is a pretty nice platform. Bing Vehicle Ads that are available um, also like Google, vehicle ads uh, can, you know, driving shopping ads down its max. Uh, last section that we have here is vehicle ads, which are formerly called vehicle listing ads, but it's the latest of what's going on in automotive shopping, uh, you know, Google shopping ads and, and that kind of thing. So again, formally as VLA ads, um, the, you know, beta testing uh, uh, was just released, excuse me, it was just released the beta really at NADA, so March, and it should be released out of beta anytime now. And there's a couple of good things that come with that. Um, but Really, what there's also some bad things that come with that. So the good thing is that new inventory is now there. Um, the ads are serving a little bit more often, but now that it moved into beta and it's going to be moving out of beta, it was a very limited set of agencies. We were a part of the alpha program, so uh, at the time we were one of the only agencies that could do it um, as part of Google's alpha testing. There was only like three or four agencies. Well, now it's it's a lot of agencies. Well, now that it's in beta, and then as you get into full release almost every agency is going to have the ability to do that on your behalf, which means a negative thing for you. So it's good that everybody's going to have access if you're a dealer who didn't have access, but now that everyone's going to do it, the costs to do this are going to go up. So to my point earlier about performance max and being a first adopter gives you the highest efficiencies is that some of these lower costs per clicks you can expect to rise. And so um, as we were running these campaigns, we're seeing a dollar, you know, in, in the range of a dollar cost per click, depending on the market, they're starting to go up a little bit. So if you get into a dollar twenty, dollar thirty a click, still very efficient for what other than what we've seen. But these ads are um, they're going to get slightly more expensive because everybody is going to be there. And so that's a call out to be ready for if you've been look, running these campaigns already, if you um, that your costs may go up. And if you haven't been running these campaigns, I definitely would make sure that they're part of your um, I would make sure they're part of your ad spend. You know, it, it really levels the playing field. You know, and who does it level the playing field with? Carvana, Auto Trader, 
car gurus, they're starting to use these vehicle at listing ads or vehicle ads again, excuse me, I, I need to correct my language on that, they just changed it. Um, but CarMax, these national brands are spending a ton of money and they've been doing it for well over a year. They were all part of the alpha program. So they were getting clicks in the 30, 40 cent range while all of us tier three dealers didn't have access to it. So again, they, they feature new and used inventory. Um, it does update automatically based on your inventory feed. So there's no keywords that need to be built. You don't have to rely on managing your agency accordingly. Like, are, are we doing this on your behalf? It just runs based off your feed. So if the feed's right, then your ads will run accordingly. So you can really let the inventory do the work for you. Um, so uh, the one call out I will say is unlike Performance Max, which is very bottom funnel and driving the store visit, a phone call and um, all of those types of things, those vehicle ads are, are more of a mid funnel tactic. It's a VDP view. It's catching somebody when they just start shopping. So I might type in Nissan Rogue for sale and see what the pricing is, as you see in the screenshot, but I might be debating between a Rogue and a CRV or something like that. And so the user might come to the site, check it out. And yes, we do get some conversions, but they're kind of in that mid funnel level where they haven't quite, they're not quite ready to call you yet. So we do see store visits, we do see these things, but look at it as a, as, a, as a mid to lower mid tactic to drive activity. And so the performance that you see on your site from vehicle ads is pretty similar to AIA ads on Meta or Facebook. And so a lot of VDP activity, you do get the calls and forms, but it keeps you in front and it also keeps you from having to spend so much money on third parties. And so if the third parties are trying to buy these ads to drive traffic back to their site, to sell them back to you, as a dealer, I would make sure that I am driving the traffic to myself instead of paying auto trader or cars, car gurus or any of those providers, I don't want to pick on anyone specifically, to then just resell it back to me. So control your own inventory. It's it's one of the inexpensive ways you can really you know level that playing field. So um, that's, that's really the main call out here for uh, you know vehicle ads on Google. And so uh, with anything Google does, uh, Microsoft follows. And so MSN Autos and Bing Vehicle Ads, those are the next thing. They really do the same thing in a slightly different way. I didn't pull a screenshot for you, which I should have. Um, but the key call out here is that, you know, th although it's not the scale that you get on Google, 10% of, you know, nearly 10% of consumers use Bing. And so uh, MSN Autos is a pretty nice platform. Bing Vehicle Ads that are available um, also like Google vehicle ads uh, can, you know, driving shopping ads down to your VDP. So great way to drive traffic to yourself and not having to spend it on third parties. And this is available as well, uh, often forgotten about um, as people look at vehicle ads with Google. Um, so again, you know, connecting your shopping ads, connect your inventory accordingly to Bing. Okay, well, um, with that, then, you know, we will follow up with this deck. If you have any questions, reach you want to reach out to me directly, brent at greenline.nyc is my email. Um, you also have our entire automotive team uh, at, and leaders are under automotive at greenline.nyc that also copies me. Um, we will share this recording in this deck. Uh, check us on social media, check our site for that. Everything will be, you know, published after the fact. But definitely, you know, some quick information, a lot in a short time period. I hope it was really beneficial for all. Uh, thank you for your time. And we will follow up with all information after the fact. So thank you again. Bye.